it won't let me go back to my intro slide, so I, uh, I did something wrong. But okay, so um, cohort diagnostics is uh, a kind of a package that a lot of people will interface uh, either indirectly or directly with um, in terms of how we build phenotypes um, on, on the on top of the entire Odyssey framework. Um, so like, why do, why do we need a package that like helps us build phenotypes? So um, if you don't have a good way of defining outcomes uh, consistently across different data sources, um, you'll have inconsistency uh, and you will not have a very good definition of what your disease outcome is or your exposure um, in terms of uh, cohort capture is good. So um, we need a kind of standard set of tools that allow us to understand what makes a phenotype good or bad. Um, we need to standardize how we capture this information um, and we need to standardize how we reproduce the actual process of analyzing phenotypes um, across uh, data sources. Um, and then really um, it's an iterative process. So uh, you might think that your um, outcome definition for say um, a given disease is good, um, but then actually going and looking at the data, you might find that you're only capturing a fraction of the patients that you wanted to capture, or uh, you look back in, in the history and you say, um, there's something that doesn't make sense with that, that outcome. Um, so we need a kind of a tool chain that allows us to do this consistently across, um, across different data sources. And so that was really like the, the, the reason for developing this package. Um, so originally, I think it was it was kind of a set of scripts that um, Martin had in his locker um, that he turned into uh, a package. Uh, for me, this was this was before my days in Odyssey, but I think he actually did this in one weekend, um, and it kind of he went from having the whole tool chain to having uh, just this this um, quite feature rich um, shiny app to visualize everything. Um, and so this went from being, you know, a set of set of debugging tools almost to uh, a standardized process for actually phenotyping any outcome that we had um, in, in in across the Odyssey community. And now you'll see on um, kind of lots of studies, this would be the, the base package where everything starts with. Um, it had a kind of rocky development because um, it it was sort of uh, developed from the perspective of solving immediate needs, and then now it's developed into something that people are using quite widely. So that's kind of uh, I think a consistent thing in new open source projects in general is people develop something to scratch their own itch, um, and then um, the feature development um, over time becomes quite uh becomes quite difficult to maintain because you realize um all of the different uh sources that other people could have um so today like our goal is to go from this kind of idea that an individual um like me that writes a lot of the code for it actually owns it to um we want to kind of say this is a community project um there's no individual that owns it it's uh it's more just we we are stewards of this project um and this this means like fundamentally for me that if we introduce a change it will have a big impact on how um how others in the community actually interact with that software uh and we have gone from making it's simple to make an authoritative decision when you're just using it in your own in your own tool chain um but when others come and actually try and uh develop software on top of this or actually use the software to to do phenotyping um it, it pe people will have problems about um opinions so um that's kind of the the, the state we're at that, uh, today um and to give a kind of overview of the core principles that i would say are like non-negotiable um these are probably consistent across a lot of odyssey packages um but in terms of cohort diagnostics, um, you know, we obviously have the privacy principle that, uh, you know, we're going to run this code on diverse sites. Um, we can't ever identify 
patient records. And so we need to conform with whatever privacy rules the sites that we execute on it have. Um, and that normally means just like not having a um, not having a uh, uh, sharing any individual records. Um, so we have like a minimum row count, for example. Um, we also need to be transparent in how we share our results. Um, and actually, you know, the code is open source, but when you share results, we don't want to just put them in our data frames or objects that aren't easy for people to look at um, as they're shared across the network. Um, and sites will have requirements on checking what data is actually shared. So they need to actually be able to audit it um, across the entire chain. Um, so, you know, for that reason, we only use um, CSV format. So anyone with any piece of software um, can actually look at it. Um, you don't need you don't need R or Excel even to um, to look at any of the data sets. Um, and then lastly, the code needs to run um, on different sites. Um, and quite often a big problem is um, we won't ever have any access to the site in question that's running it and we will need to figure out um, like if a bug occurs, we need to figure out how that happened. Um, and so um, that kind of uh, that kind of covers our core principles for developing it. Um, uh, so, um, firstly, I should say uh, everything in cohort diagnostics is in R and SQL. So you don't really need um, to know a bunch of coding languages. Um, you can just get started quite quickly. If you've ever built a Shiny app before, you could probably help us out um, in a few days. Um, uh, so there's two kind of parts to it. There's the Shiny app that you would interact with to, to see um, the visual results. And then there's the actual execution um, diagnostic step, which is a 12 step process of just sequentially um, running um, data analysis to uh, collect the results that we use later. Um, and so, you know, that execution step, we kind of say, um, we generate the cohorts from a given cohort uh, definition set. Um, this is this is actually using um, a standard process now from uh, the cohort generator package, which um, Anthony Senna, who is in the other track, actually has overseen. Um, but we use that package uh, on top of cohort diagnostics to kind of to generate everything. And um, the idea being that there's a consistent um, consistent framework for generating cohorts, rather than previously we would have had it just inside our own package. Um, and then there's various diagnostics that we need to run. Um, these results are saved to a CSV, and then this would be repeated for multiple CDMs if you have access to multiple CDMs. Um, but normally you would have, you know, um, more than one site where you're merging results into a single database. Um, and this happens normally inside uh, our users will develop study packages on top of cohort diagnostics that do this process. Um, and uh, another kind of philosophy is we want everything to be executed incrementally. So by that, I mean every time a task is is run, so say a cohort is generated, um, we want to figure out uh, the orphan concepts that are generated with the cohort. We want to do um, our incidents analysis. Uh, that is actually computed as a task. And if it's finished, a checksum sum is generated. Um, and that allows us to say if a job stops for any reason, for a bug in the code, for network failure, um, any of the reasons that happen, um, if the user reruns the job, they don't have to rerun uh, the costly steps again. Um, if you're using, you know, the order of like 10 to 15 cohorts, and then uh, the, on a large data set, you know, this can take, this process can take days to run. Um, so we don't really want to have to have users um, rerunning steps. And similarly, um, one thing that uh, when you're developing a cohort, you will frequently want to change it in response to uh, the results that you actually see. But you you know your project in question will have multiple cohorts, so you don't want to rerun um, rerun results where they haven't been run before. Um, so. That's kind of conceptually useful to understand when you're actually looking at the code and the execution phase. 
Um, another thing is, uh, so we have, as Adam mentioned before, we use a kind of um, fairly consistent testing framework across Odyssey packages now. Um, I, uh, we've set it up so that you can run any tests on an SQLite database locally. Um, and uh, so what I mean by that is that you don't need to have access to a CDM or any data to actually test the code. You can just run that on your local machine and it should work. Um, we, you know, we do have a good set of tests in terms of like the, the overall execution of process, but one thing we're really wanting to move towards, and we started last year with uh, um, unit test -a -thon, is to kind of have more tests that actually validate the specific input and output of specific parts um, of, of the, the code. Um, and kind of the workflow I would say is you test locally on your Unomia SQLite database, which takes not very long. Um, and then we kind of push your code in your pull request, and then it will test on the, the GitHub actions on our um, Odyssey cloud uh, setup so that then we have like kind of a real realistic um, CDM that you can actually uh, perform any analysis on. Um, one thing I will say is this GitHub Actions step takes a long time to run because when you run with a real vocabulary, you you know you have to look through lots of different records. Um, so most of the workflow that you want to do when you're actually writing code is to just test locally in that kind of um, uh, SQL light uh, environment. Um, so uh, I kind of had a, an example plan of uh, how you would do this. Um, so first thing, I use DevTools to test because I find it convenient in terms of being able to add breakpoints um, and um, just doing this. Um, if you work on a Mac or a Linux environment, you won't need to do any changes to the to the to do this. But there is a kind of one configuration step um, that requires you to copy. Uh, a folder. Um, if you get stuck, please just get in contact with me if you ever feel like running tests. Um, so I'll give you an example. Um, so, uh, so here, for example, I want to just say let's say I've got the package downloaded, um, I've cloned it from GitHub, uh, and now I wanna kind of start looking at how would I get involved um, with the code. So, um, you know, the main interface to the package is this execute diagnostic function, so I'll start there. Uh, and I say, I found a bug somewhere in my code, um, and now I wanna use um, DevTools to test it. So, I will do DevTools test and then um, oh. so running the test like this, you'll see the, uh, the boilerplate code works, runs, executes. Um, and now What's happened here is I added a breakpoint in my R Studio script, um, and as you can see, it's kind of stopped there. Um, and this gives a good example of like what you see when you're actually going through code to debug. Um, you can kind of see uh, all of the the variables that you have in your um, in the the state of execution in your code, um, and then if you say you had a problem with one of the lines of code here, say um, you weren't sure what the variables were. Uh, you, you could you could then go through and then just kind of look at them. So um, that kind of gives you an indication of like how you interact with the the, the testing um, of the package. And uh, yeah, as I say, like I use Dev Tools to just give me this this good idea of overview of how how things work. Um, if you want a more in depth example of of tests. You can go into the uh, tests test uh, test that directory, and you'll see um, you know our base uh, our base tests, which are largely um, largely based on 
uh, setting up functions for how for how they would um, you know how how you would execute them in practice, and then we want to see uh, we have like a set of conditions for um, when the execution runs correctly or when the execution doesn't run correctly um, in the case of you know if errors are generated um, when they should be generated. Um, so I think that gives an indication of the tests. Um, so, uh, so I kind of talked a bit about the um, the, the structure of the uh, execution aspect of the package. Um, in a separate part of the package, um, we actually have the shiny application, um, and it's almost it's almost like the, the package, I would say, is like separated into two uh, to two parts. Um, you have that kind of standard R package, and then you have this Shiny app, which is designed to be run independently on top of a results data set. Um, so we used to have kind of two modes of data. We're in a transition page at the moment. Our, our next release will remove um, our data frame objects that we use whether with the merge results and replace it only with database backends. So um, everything will use an SQL like backend um, or a PostgreSQL uh, backend, um, depending on how large your data size is um, and how many users you expect to interact with it. But in short, basically, um, that's, that, that will be like how, how we work going forward. So um, that's quite a big change that we're still in the process of finalizing. Um, so there are two, there are actually two shiny apps in the cohort diagnostics uh, framework. One is the diagnostics explorer, which is probably, um, if you've seen Odyssey studies, you've probably interacted with that um, as part of the phenotype fe February process that was heavily used there. Um, and this is like our standard tool to kind of debug phenotypes. And there is also an app called cohort explorer. Um, and that's less used, but it's an incredibly useful tool um, for just going through uh, like cohorts if you find um, if you find bugs um, or if you actually want to look at users as they interact. Uh, sorry, users as they users. I'm talking. Uh, yeah. So the cohort explorer lets you look at um, individual patient records within a cohort, and you can kind of get a time. Um, time view, uh, a timeline of what happens to that patient um, throughout uh, their, their time in the cohort. Um, and that's kind of, that app is fairly stable and we haven't actually really had to touch it for a long time because um, it, it just does what it does well, um, but it is there, so it's worth, worth mentioning. Um, in terms of the Diagnostic Explorer, um, we want to move towards uh, so testing the shiny apps. So we have this kind of code coverage report for our package. And we say it's 80%. That's true for the uh, internally for the, the, the execution of the package. But the um, for the shiny applications, we don't actually have good test coverage at all. Um, and this is the most common source of error that we have in our uh, package at the moment is just changes that occur to the shiny application. Um, but this isn't hard. Uh, this isn't a problem that we can't fix, and this is something that I, I uh, this is a call for for me and the rest of anyone else that wants to get involved. Um, there's actually plenty of good uh, mechanisms inside Shiny to to do testing, um, and there's also ways we can make the mo uh, the application more modular, which we're we're working towards as well. Um, and my goal, uh, this isn't an OKR for or, or anything like that for, for Odyssey, but this is just a uh, overall goal for me is to have a test first philosophy for this for this package. So if we make any change, um, there should be a test for that change, just so we can minimize bugs and kind of have a, a better framework um, for doing it. Um, so that, that yeah, that kind of gives you an indication of where I want to take cohort diagnostics um, in the next few months. Um, and this kind of goes, we've got more uh, immediate future plans that if you want to get involved with, we'd be super happy to have more uh, collaborators there. So 
Um, one thing we'd like to do is kind of take the package and uh, instead of having it uh, execute things all at, like in this one execute interface is to have kind of executable parts that are indiv individually executable. Um, so there's a package called targets, which we had a talk in the um, Odyssey open source group um, a few weeks ago. Uh, and we really liked it for like kind of building workflows that were uh, that are more complex than, you know, just having a standard set of procedures. Um, we have kind of this notion of uh, shared jobs that are distribu distributed um, on, uh, you know, in more more um, high performance or cloud environments that are kind of becoming popular. Um, and we want to have like a more, uh, more modular way of interacting with other Hades packages. Um, as at the moment, uh, you know, we're in the kind of trap where everything within cohort diagnostics doesn't, doesn't, it either uses Odyssey packages or it doesn't really, um, it, there's no real kind of standards for um, interoperability. Um, and also we want to kind of focus on this iterative development of cohorts um, and understand how we can invalidate certain steps of the process um, at, as we go forward. And that kind of fits in with this targets package. Um, and yeah, so this is really a call to arms, like because we need people, um, and it's not just coders; it's anyone that wants to get involved. Um, at any process, just using the software um, is incredibly useful from from my perspective, uh, because every time you use it, you can find a bug. You can go, you can go to the um, GitHub page. You can submit an issue. Um, you can email me and ask me a question, uh, and just you know any new features or any problems you have with the package like start discussions um that's uh just invaluable because um we did we you know we only have a very vague idea of how actually how people actually use software we, we write um but if you can code or you want to get into coding there's plenty of opportunities as well um you can just find uh bugs on the issue tracker and then um, have a look through the code to see if you can figure it out. Um, and, uh, you know, we're all friendly in, in the Odyssey community, I like to think. So if you have, um, if you get stuck along the way, we're always there to, to kind of give people um, advice and help. Um, and, uh, you know, just reviewing code is super important for us as well. Um, just going through the code and seeing if there's anything that you think we can do better. Um, you know that that will that will really help. And if you just feel like writing a unit test, that um, that would make me um, and everyone else in the package uh, really happy. Um, so uh, so some useful links. If you want to email me, I'm always emailable. Um, post messages in the Odyssey forums. You can come here on Teams to post uh, chats. Um, I'm less good at checking the Odyssey Teams because I have to swap between Odyssey and um, my internal teams. Um, but yeah, you can post messages there. Um, just go into the, the GitHub. Um, if you want to explore, there's an example explorer that we have for um, one of the studies that's going on now. Um, yeah. Uh, so 